Welcome to Atmos 5000 Day 1. We're going to be focusing in on Chapter 1, Sections 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3 from Roland Stoll's textbook, Practical Meteorology. The objectives for today are to understand the naming conventions that we use to describe the wind through the meteorological wind rows. We'll learn how to calculate the wind magnitude and direction from its individual components. We'll define the azimuth, zenith, and elevation angles. And we'll introduce the concept of time zones and coordinated universal time. From a meteorological perspective, we're much more interested in where the wind is coming from than where it is going to. As a result, our naming convention is based upon the direction from which the wind is blowing. So we use a compass rose, but it's not the normal compass rose that you use in math. Instead, it has zero degrees uh, at the top of the compass rose from the north direction and moves in a clockwise direction. So that a northerly wind, a wind coming from the north, is designated as zero degrees or 360 degrees. The east wind, a wind coming from the east is designated as 90 degrees. A wind from the south is 180 degrees, and a wind from the west is 270 degrees. We also use the Cartesian coordinate system, where x is in the east-west direction, y is in the north-south direction, and z is in the up and down direction. We define the east-west wind along the x-axis as u, the north-south wind along the y-axis as V, and the up-down wind along the z-axis as W. So here in the xy plane, we have a wind, a vector wind in the red arrow, which is going from the origin and it's coming from the northeastern direction to the southwest. And we have M, which is the magnitude of that vector. And that vector is composed of two components, the east-west component, U, which is minus 4 meters per second, and the north-south component, V, which is minus 5 meters per second. If you want to calculate the uh, magnitude of the resultant vector, you can use the top equation, U squared plus V squared. The square root of that will get you the uh, magnitude of that wind vector. Um, you can also use trigonometry to figure out the angle alpha. In this case, alpha is the tangent, uh, inverse tangent of minus 4 over minus 5 for 38.7 degrees. And so overall, uh, the magnitude of this particular wind is 6.4 meters per second, and it happens to be coming from 38.7 degrees, indicating that it's a northeasterly wind. When we start talking about radiation later in the class, it's going to be really important that we understand uh, essentially the direction that the sun is relative to an observer on the surface. And we have several different ways that we can use to uh, define that angle. Uh, the first is the elevation angle, uh, in this case, uh, theta EL, which is basically looking at the angle from the horizon to the sun. Uh, <clears throat> that will be maximized in summer and minimized in the winter. Alternatively, we can define the zenith angle as the uh, angle between the straight up and the, in this case, the angle of the sun. This angle here would be the zenith angle. Um, together, the elevation angle and the zenith angle make a right uh, triangle, make it 90 degrees, essentially. Um, and then we also have the azimuth angle, which is the angle uh, essentially looking north, south, east, west uh, on where uh, the sun would be in this configuration. And it's defined as the angle from pointing north. So north is zero degrees. Uh, if it was directly to the east, it would be 90 degrees or directly to the south, it would be degrees and so forth. 
Uh, we have a time zone map. <clears throat> the Earth has 360 degrees uh, around its circumference, if you want to think of it that way, and there are 24 hours in a day. So that if you divide 360 degrees by 24 hours, uh, you'll get uh, 15 degrees. And so what we have done politically is to divide the world up into time zones that are nominally 15 degrees wide. We set the first time zone uh, along the prime meridian that passes through Greenwich, England, and we refer to that time zone as time zone Z. And then as you move eastward away from that, uh, the time zones have designations of A, B, C, D, E, F, etc. And on the uh, western side of the prime meridian, uh, we have the time zones that we see here in the United States. Uh, time zone, uh, essentially U being the Pacific time zone, T being the mountain, S being the central, and R being the uh, Eastern time zone. And so you can see that since we're in time zone T, uh, we're essentially one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hours um, behind the time in Greenwich, England. So we have what we call universal coordinated time. If we're taking meteorological measurements over the entire planet, it would be really confusing if everybody reported their data at local time. Instead, what every meteorological observer does is they report their time uh, as the universal coordinated time, which is the time in Greenwich, England in time zone Z. And so all meteorological measurements are reported in UTC uh, to avoid confusion. And UTC has several different names. It's sometimes called Zulu time, or sometimes it's called Greenwich Mean Time, GMT. When we look at a weather map, it's really important to be able to understand what the time code actually means. And so here we have Pacific Standard Time, Pacific Daylight Time. Um, so on Standard Time, uh, it's eight hours earlier than UTC. And when they move on Daylight Time, they jump ahead one time zone. So they move essentially from the U time zone to the T time zone, which is only seven hours off. Likewise, in the Mountain Standard Time, we're normally seven hours off, but during the Daylight uh, Savings Time Period, we're only six hours off. Central Time Zone uh, is one hour closer to UTC, as is Eastern Time Zone. So uh, here we have some examples that you should be able to do. If we wanted to convert from 6 o'clock Mountain Standard Time to UTC, since we are Mountain Standard Time, we are seven hours difference. Uh, UTC is seven hours ahead. So we add seven hours to our 0600 to get 1300 Zulu or 13 UTC. Uh, if we are instead at 2100 Mountain Standard Time, we have to add seven hours. We'd add seven to 21, that gives us 28, but we're on a 24 hour clock, so we subtract off 24 and we'll get our four Zulu. Uh, likewise, when we move to daylight time, we are no longer seven hours uh, behind Greenwich Mean Time. We are now six hours behind. So we have to add six hours to the 12 and get your 18 Zulu. And likewise, if you go from Mountain Daylight Time at 2300, you add six hours and that gets you 29. Subtract off 24, you get to five Zulu. And you can also convert uh, backwards from Zulu time to Mountain Standard Time or to Mountain Daylight Time. And it's a good practice to be able to do that quickly.